Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about helping to raise a sunk fishing trawler, get the engine running again, and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. All right, here we are in Renko, uh, about to head over, meet Adrian, and see what we can do to help salvage and get this boat running again. Looks like Rob's got his crane onto it already, so we're not gonna have to get wet today. It's always uh, nice. All right, boys are on it. We're tied up with the wharf now. Our job really is to work on the engine stuff once it gets up. There'll be a while lifting that with the crane high enough to better pump it out. I saw one of Pete's uh, fish bins in the channel, they're worth quite a bit, so I'm going to go grab it. Frustratingly can't see it now. Oh well, it's worth a shot. Back to the job at hand. Rob's gone to grab some bulker bags to put a bit of ballast on his uh, on his barge so that we can put a bit more load on the crane. Crane's got the strength, but we just don't have the flotation in the barge. What do you reckon, Cletus? Uh, I reckon I look like Elmer Fudd today. <laughs> Elmer Fudd. So, yeah. Hmm. Should we try and get some of this stuff just... Yeah, maybe. Just get it out. Because we need to use both cranes simultaneously to have the strength to lift the stern of the boat to get the scuppers above the water, we ended up towing the boat out of its pen so we could get along both sides of it. The plan now is try and use both cranes to lift the stern, see how it goes. By putting a steel pole across the gunnels of the barges, it meant we could attach the bow of the boat to it and then let the pressure off that second crane and then move it to the stern of the boat. Trying to get this one in position now. Yeah, port side looks down a little bit. <laughs> 
Working together, the two cranes managed to get the scuppers above the water so we could get the water pump going. The pump is on the far barge and did a really good job of getting the water out pretty quickly. The pump's well and truly winning now. It's definitely starting to float. Sounds dumb that I use it in my acid bath. Kitty newspaper. Yeah, right. Kitty litter does it too, doesn't it? Yeah, they the newspaper on top and it takes the oil off. Yep. Just throw it in the, yep. throw it in the oil recycling tub. Exactly. And off it goes. And off it goes. So GME spirit level. Mm. Hang on. You're going to no. level the boat off? Yeah. we are just... Ooh. <laughs> Put it back towards you. Uh. I just got pulled back to... Just going to wire up the manual wire on this bilge pump. It's only on auto at the moment. The thing I love about trawlers like this is all the farmyard engineering. Here the flange of the winch drum has got a brake caliper attached with a bit of a block that's been drilled and tapped so that a bolt can press against it with just a spanner as a handle. It's very rudimentary but very effective. New wharf engineer. Yep, new wharf engineering. <gasps> you need a ratchet strap. I've got one of them actually, you're huge. That'll be the go. Yeah. Still is there. Yeah, it's almost moved. It's come up like six inches. Has it? Yeah, right. Do you want us to both pull on it or? Yep. Start the boat up and pull it forward. Yeah, right. We're <laughs> <laughs> close, we're a lot better than what we were. Uh, doesn't feel as wobbly though, does it? Uh, where's that? Wow, so it's come right out of that notch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. I reckon with a ratchet strap you'd get it. Chain block. We've been distracted. So, after the uh, oil absorbent pads pumped the water out, now we've got a bit of degreaser and everything because as the you know the oil sits on the surface of the water and as it floods, just coats everything. Bit of degreaser, and now we're just going to go nuts with the gurney, wash everything with fresh. can't flush a sunk motor with enough fresh water once you get it back on the surface. It might sort of uh, feel like a strange thing to do to be putting water in all these places but it's not going to get anywhere than it was and getting all the salt and that abrasive sort of river silt off is, is critical to getting it run properly again. The other satisfying thing here is there was no water on the wharf so we ran a petrol pressure washer from the water tanks on Renko using the electric pressure feed to the pressure washer and worked out really well. It was nice to see that in action. Of course the next job was to start getting all that fresh water back out of the boat so we could get it ready to start up. Oh, it sucks water out. Well done. Still, it's good to get. It's never going to get wetter than it was. No. All right. So suck all the oil out. Suck all the oil out. Uh, uh just water, just water, fill water, it with water, 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 oil. And then uh, leave the oil filter, the old oil filter, for now, and then just. Yeah, but it won't have water in it. Yeah, yeah it true. Will. Yeah, a lot of water, isn't it? I think there's no oil left in that one. It's water to the top. This reservoir you can see here, Adrian emptying, is the oil reservoir for the hydraulic pump that's on the back of the gearbox. That hydraulic pump runs all the winches, etc. But because of the breather on it, 
the heavier water can displace all the oil while it sunk, so it was pretty much all gone, unfortunately. It just filled that little rock cover up. It's like it's not much yeah, at all. Yeah, it's like a real dribble goes in at a time. That must be a Cummins thing. Yep, they just can't handle it. Yep. Alright, we're going to see how much water's in the fuel now. I don't even know where the breather is either. I know, that's the worry. It's like... <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Double capped. Okay. There's diesel there. <laughs> Bit over full. Sweet. Oh, you got the multi -grip? It's full. It's very full. <laughs> it's not a good sign. <laughs> but it might not be too bad. Wait, well, sucker. quite a shallow fuel tank. Big but shallow. <laughs> it's not going to be quite as obvious whether it's uh, water. <laughs> I have to sample a bit. Get a couple of shot glasses. Yep. You first? Yeah. As Adrian was busy getting all the water out from the various oil reservoirs, the sump, the hydraulic oil, etc., I had my head in the bilge getting the wiring ready so we could put a brand new battery in and get this engine started. The block. Because we didn't have anywhere to store all the diesel from the fuel tank, we ended up just plumbing a line straight from a jerry can of fresh diesel into the engine. The return went back into the fuel tank, but that's fine because that'll just get cleaned up later on. Not too long after we got the engine running again, the sun started to set, so it was a big day, but it was great to get to this stage by the end of the day. Obviously, there's a lot more work to do, cleaning the boat, getting electrics, you know, fixed up again, a lot of wiring replaced, but it's in a much better position than it was at the start of the day. Well, thanks for watching. It was a great job by Rob and his crew getting the boat back on the surface. Definitely a tricky one given the size of the cranes he had. The engine uh, got started up pretty quickly. Um, when they started cranking it, I went to pull my phone out to do a bit of a vid and it was running by the time I got it out. So it gives you an idea how quickly it did fire up. I, I think a lot of engines do survive a dunking. What tends to be a bigger problem is electrics, particularly all the positives. They're the ones that get eaten away when the current flows from electrolysis. So a bit of wiring to do, obviously, um, and some collateral damage with the electronics, but fingers crossed should be back in action pretty soon. The real trick is to get these engines running as soon as possible after they come up. If you lift the boat and then wait a couple of days to get it running, you've pretty much got no chance. It will have seized, corrosion will have set in. Then once you do get it running, the trick is to run it frequently and run it for quite a long time. You want to get the heat in to try and steam all that residual water out. But if you follow those sort of procedures, you've got a good chance of still getting a decent life out of the engine. All right, well, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week. See ya. Come on, Daisy. Big jump. Well done. 
Not easy stairs, are they? I mean, you've got little bird legs. All right, say goodbye to everyone. Too busy eating, aren't you? There you go.